Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate installing Grid Infrastructure 11G R2 on those nodes that we prepared in the last video. So you can see here I've got a node A2 and a node A1 both prepared in the same way that we saw earlier. Uh, they're both identical except uh, obviously the host names and the IPs are different. Alright, uh, we're going to minimize these guys because um, actually I don't usually work right on my servers. Think production, we don't normally go into the data center and whack on the servers. We normally remotely connect to them. So that's what we're going to do here. Okay. There we go. We connect to my node one using the management IP. All right. Now, first thing we need to do is configure our SSH keys. Okay. Now, I actually have uh, another video where I demonstrate how SSH works. And in this case, I'm just going to uh, speed through this part because I don't want to bore all of you that know how this works. Oops. Before I do that, let's just make sure that I can SSH to myself, which seems kind of strange, and that I can SSH to the other node. Oops. Now what that does is it populates my known host file with both node A1 and node A2. Some strange thing about uh, the Oracle prerequisites is that we require the test for SSH equivalency to work not only between all nodes, but also from ourselves to ourselves. So node A1 must be able to SSH into node A1 without being challenged for a password. Don't know why this is a requirement, but uh, I think it's just somebody too lazy to, you know, to actually figure out the test properly. So, it's quite all right, we'll comply. Hmm. Okay, just do that, there we go. All right, so this is what we wanted to accomplish. I'm on node A1, I can SSH into node A2 without being challenged, and that's exactly what I just did. All right, so now what we wanna do is mount the CD-ROM, which I have yet to connect. So we connect it right there. The CD-ROM with our software on it. <coughs> So we do that, just gonna put it on slash media, not the best place, but I don't really care. And this is all in the grid run installer. And this is actually a pretty straightforward install. Um, pretty confident all the prerequisites have been met uh, with all the steps that I've demonstrated up to this point. Okay, so what we're going to do is install and configure grid infrastructure for a cluster. Advanced installation, choose your language, and give our cluster a name. Notice as I type a cluster name here, it uh, autofills in my scan name here. This is actually a host name, a host name that you would expose to your clients as being the host and the port 1521 in this case, to find the listener that will find our rack services. Okay. So you'll notice that it's actually cluster1-scan, that's the suggested name, dot a bunch of stuff. This bunch of stuff is actually the subdomain that has been given to us by our network administrator for our purposes. Okay, so here site a.example.com is what's been given to us and a public IP has been allocated for our GNS virtual IP. This GNS virtual IP is really going to listen on port 53 UDP and simulate a DNS server. This is actually pretty brilliant. Um, Oracle is going to be providing DNS services and we've called it GNS, um, Global Naming Service. The idea is this, this DNS service is dynamic. So those three IPs that we're going to be grabbing through DHCP on the public network will be assigned to VIPs, the same kind of VIPs we've seen before, virtual IPs, that, uh, that we hold on to and kind of bounce back and forth between the nodes. 
Problem is, as we start to see more than three nodes, let's say we get up to like 10 nodes, we would end up consuming 10 virtual IPs and that's a little expensive. Three is probably enough. And as long as we provide a round robin A record resolution for those three IPs, um, we'll be set. I'll show a little bit more of this after we've configured uh, grid infrastructure. Okay, so just remember for now, cluster1-scan.siteA.example.com. This is the host name that we will give to our clients. Okay, and this is the subdomain that has been delegated to us. Your network administrator or sysadmin, whoever's responsible, is charted with the with the responsibility to actually point an NS record. Okay, so an NS record for the subdomain must point to the, uh, to the host name, to a host name that resolves to this IP. Okay. All right. So now we're actually verifying that there is an NS record. And we're going to provide the names of our other nodes. In our case, there's only one other node, node a 2siteaexampplecom And notice that we do not need to specify virtual IP for our listeners um, on these nodes because we're actually going to pull it off of DHCP. Okay, so we have configured DHCP earlier. Just click Next. Okay, so here are our interfaces. Uh, we have ETH0, this is going to be our public. ETH1 is our private, and ETH2 is our management network, which we're not going to use for cluster. Okay, We're going to put OCR on ASM, and we're going to deliberately create a disk group called cluster, normally redundant, Okay, so that means two-way mirrors, on our dev SD, B, C, and D. Okay, now we need to select a minimum of three in order to be two-way mirrored. And the reason for this is we need to establish a voting quorum. Okay, so our voting disk will also be sitting on, these, uh, on this ASM. All right, give ourselves a password for sys. Actually, we'll make this actually compliant. There we are, okay. So sys and ASM SNMP, which is an account that's used by um, by Enterprise Manager and the, well, the agent of Enterprise Manager to connect and grab uh, metrics. Um, we're not going to use IPMI in this case and notice that we have actually configured dedicated operating system groups for ASM DBA, funny name for you know the ASM administrator, which is actually down here, the ASM instance administrator versus the ASM operator. Okay, so just keep that in mind too. There's three distinct roles. Um, this is our base. This is our grid infrastructure install directory. You can see here uh, user one app 1120 is not in the base. Okay, and that's somewhat important uh, because of the ownerships of these directories. We say next to that, we now have to find the location for the inventory. After we verify we have enough, we have enough space. Okay, so um, specify a directory for the Oracle inventory. Here it is. Um, you'll notice that this is not in the base. Okay, so that's also quite important. And we're going to do the prerequisite test. So these checks, we're going to make sure that everything's in place on both nodes. Uh, it's nice that we're actually checking both nodes. In 10G and in 11G release 1, uh, we really only checked node 1. So I used to use this trick where I deliberately uh, cranked down the memory on the second node, on the second VMs, and I was able to uh, squeeze installations into uh, a lot less space than uh, we should have been doing. Anyhow, there we go. All the prerequisites passed. We click finish and uh, we wait.